All right, for today's material study, we are gonna look at scumbling. Scumbling is shading with sketchy twirly lines. Shading with sketchy twirly lines. Um, for this one, you're gonna make one inch boxes with your ruler. I'm gonna take my ruler, it's kind of a standard size one. I'm gonna make sure I have eight boxes, just like all the other ones. Um, for this one, actually, you have a couple choices. That's a good question. Uh, scumbling, you can use, um, you can use either your fine Sharpie or your ultra fine Sharpie. Or for this one, if you want to, you can use a ballpoint pen. Those, that's also a fun tool to do scumbling with. Um, so I would recommend either your fine Sharpie or a ballpoint pen. Um, a ballpoint pen, you can really go to town. I wouldn't use the ultra fine Sharpie for this until you get really good at it because like the way that I do scumbling is kind of, I get kind of intense with it and like I wouldn't want to like lose track of how much pressure I'm using um, and accidentally ruin my marker. That's a good question. So um, you can use your fine point Sharpie. You can use a ballpoint pen. Um, don't use a pencil for this because, um, at least for this one, we don't want to make it something that you can smudge with your fingers. Um, maybe you could use, if you have another kind of pen you would like to use, you can use that as well. Um, I'm going to start, ooh, I'll start with my Sharpie. All right, so scumbling is kind of... If you can fit it on the same page as the other ones, then yes, you should. Um, I couldn't because I had made a bunch of extra marks on the side of my other one. Uh, and so I did not want to put it on the same page. All right, so I'm making sure that I'm going all the way up to the edges and I'm using really kind of like swirly, twirly, messy lines. It kind of looks like a, like a, like my cat got a hold of a, a bunch of yarn and just like went to town all over a whole room. So it's kind of, it's, it goes all the way up to the edges and it's really swirly twirly. And the I lightest one, any type of pen. you can use any type of pen. Yep. For the lightest one, I, I, you can see kind of there, I barely used any lines. Um, and that's what, like all the space in between is what makes it seem really light. So I'm gonna go ahead and, ooh, you know what? You know what? Since I'm using my iPad as my camera, I can't pull up a little value scale, but I'm gonna use one of my old stippling value scales to tell me what value to use. I feel so smart. There we go. Wait, how long is our bar supposed to be? Eight inches or eight squares. Yeah, eight squares. So. My bar is eight squares long, it's eight inches long. And the way that I made this bar was, I put my ruler down, I put a little mark at each inch, and then I just traced the outside of the ruler. That was kind of the easiest one. I didn't measure to make sure it was a full inch tall. It looks like it's a little bit taller than it is. Like each square is a little bit taller than they are wide. Um, that's fine. So um, a nice thing about scumbling is that you're kind of drawing like ghosty, like eight figure eights, go all the way up to the edge. Um, a nice thing about scumbling, if you're like a messy person, kind of like me, I really like scumbling. That's kind of my one of my favorite shade, ways to shade with ink because the lines should look kind of, they should go all over the place. Try to avoid having a pattern if you can. Um, 
Maybe it looked, I feel like a spider was crawling across your paper because it is the spooky season. That's what scumbling might be good for. So I'm always kind of leaning back after I think I've finished each square. I'm always kind of leaning back to see if it's the correct value. I'm closing one eye, I'm blurring my vision. This can be a mixture of straight lines and swirly twirly lines. But again, I've said this a bunch of times, um, the more random you can make your marks, the less you're using a pattern, uh, the smoother your eye is gonna make it. I really like scumbling as shading. Some people really like using hatch marks and cross hatching it sh when shading. Um, it can really be your choice. All right, so it looks like this guy needs to be a little bit darker. Makes it easier for you to tell what I'm talking about if I number my squares. As I look between my scumbling square and my, my um, stippling square, I can kind of see the values of things. This is looking pretty good. Okay, so the last square that you're gonna make is, or the last stepped value scale that you're gonna make in all of this. I'm gonna go ahead and make that. It'll be eight boxes, like almost all the other ones. And for this last one, you can use whichever tool you want as well, as long as it's an ink tool. So you can use a pen, you can use the ultra fine Sharpie, you can use your fine shar Sharpie. I don't know what else has ink in it, but um, if it has ink in it, you can use it. For this one, this one can get really clever and fun. It's gonna be letters or numbers. Letters or numbers, that's your last stepped value scale. Um, I'm gonna use, if I have it, I think I have it. I do, I do have it. I'm gonna use my ultra fine Sharpie. Mine is a little clicky one, this one was at my house. Yours doesn't have to be the little clicky one. Um, but you can see it's the really fine tip. Um, I'm gonna just spell out letters or numbers. So letter L, E, T, T, E, R, S. So here's my lightest one. It says letters. Uh, for this, if you, you can write your letters and numbers in like really neat lines, but then try to put them Try to put those lines in different directions. Like try not to have them all going in the same way. So here's my darkest box. It says letters a bunch of times in a bunch of different directions. And I'll start saying numbers. The thing that makes your darkest box darkest is if you have lines, um, if you think of these different letters and numbers um, as a mark. You kind of make sure that there's barely any white space. So in my darkest box, um, I'm using really narrow characters 
and I'm leaving barely any space in between them. So here, I'll pick this up. Um, in the video or in the Zoom, you can kind of see I wrote letters and numbers in a bunch of different directions and all my characters are really, really close to each other. So just like all your other value scales, the name of the game is about the space you leave between your different marks and trying to go in random directions. Wait, can we do the letters and numbers with anything? Yep. Any other... Yeah, you can use any, any um, ink-based tool. So, um, my cat really wants to draw too. She's really jealous of all of you. Um, you can also use any words, but you know, make sure that they're school appropriate words. So I can say my name, R Y N, and if you like. If you like mysteries, right? This could be a fun way to shade where like you have an extra message in there. Sunshine. Yes, Jesso? Here, I'll spell your name. G-E-S-S-O. Kitty, K-I-T-T-Y. And then goose can be in there as well. Yes? So you can see my, uh, my darkest box. I'll probably need to go over some of the letters and numbers um, before all is said and done. Um, so that it gets really, really dark because as I blur my vision, this box number one here, four, five, six, seven, box number one seems to be about the same value as my scumbling box number five. So I'm gonna need to go over this a few more times with other letters. Um, Mr. Nine. Yes. the video that they're going to make? Yes, so yes. Kind of that is fine, and I'm sorry for my tech difficulties. Yes, you may. It's okay. Uh, do you want me to check back in? Um, no, you don't have to. We only have about seven minutes of class left. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye. All right, so for people watching the video, um, there we go. You're going to have scumbling, letters or numbers. For letters or numbers... It's basically shading with writing. And you're thinking about the different characters of the alphabet or the different numbers as a way to make a mark for shading. And it can be a lot of fun because um, depending on what word you're using for shading, like you can have a you can have a second message. Um, you could like you could you could say Minecraft a bunch of times, right? Um, you can say whatever you're a fan of, right? Like you can put secret words in there, um, and then it's kind of a reward for people who look really really closely. Um, just make sure that you're spelling something correctly if you're going to spell the same word over and over again. <laughs> um, I have a fun a funny story I did. Um, a big drawing like this in high school, and I spelled like I I um I drew like a fork, a knife, a spoon, like different cutlery. And um my uh my art teacher was looking at it up close, and she was like, "But why does the knife have a K in it?" Right? Because she had forgotten how to spell knife. There's a silent K, so um it can be a lot of fun. It's uh it it, it does take more time, but if you're somebody who really likes thinking things through, um this can be a really fun way to shade. Um, so by the end of this, you should have five stepped value scales. And the next time I see you, I will tell you about your options for your gradation scale.